हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज आर लेक्चर नंबर टेन इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व पार्ट वन एंड लेक्चर इज अबाउट मेमो राइटिंग वेल दिस लेक्चर इज अबाउट द मेमो राइटिंग एज वी नो डैट मेमो लेटर्स ई मेल मैसेजेस आर द बेसिक टाइप ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन चैनल Uh, that we often use for uh, uh, different purposes uh, when uh, should you write an email message instead of a memo or when sh uh, should you write you uh, a memo instead of letter uh, is uh, instant message or text message appropriate the situation um, you will make the decision based on your audience the complexity of uh, the topic the speed uh, with which your message can be delivered and is also uh, the um, uh, information um, the confidentiality is very important because as we know that there are different modes of communication uh, like we can email them uh, we can uh, write a letter or uh, and, uh, as the technology Uh, is growing so we can also have the text messages and uh, also the different uh, type of broadcast messaging techniques uh, so uh, we will see that why a memo is uh, necessary and uh, what are the alternatives of uh, memo writing or memos and especially uh, why we write memo what are the uh, purpose behind that because uh, generally uh, memos are considered uh, to be written within the organization from uh, department to department or uh, if you want to uh, circulate a information uh, so you can write a memo the complete Uh, uh form is uh, we can say it is memorandum so uh, we will see in this lecture uh, with uh, some of the examples uh, of uh, uh, memo writing and uh, especially uh, the cases uh, what is a good memo what is a bad memo especially uh, uh, the basic characteristics like uh, destination format um especially audience um, because uh, it is very important uh, to know uh, that to whom you are addressing uh, like uh, if you are writing uh, a journal memo uh, towards uh, all employees uh, of the um, industry uh, then the language barrier can be a uh, issue so uh, you have to write uh the memo in uh, multiple languages like uh, you can uh, you have to write in english language also you have to write in urdu language because uh, the common man or the labor working in the uh industry cannot uh, understand the english language or any other language so uh, there is a language barrier there uh, also uh, there are different uh, type of uh, Uh, cases uh, like um, uh, one more characteristics like complexity and length of communication for example if the, if the communication is uh, too long like uh, you have to uh, c communicate a very lengthy message so uh, you can use some other mode because in memo you are uh, restricted uh that uh, what are that restrictions uh, we will discuss uh, later on uh, also uh, the one of the more uh, most important characteristic is tone also uh because uh, tone is important uh, as i said about the audience uh, also the attachments because uh, what are you attaching for example you are attaching a, a change of time a uh, change of duty time or uh, you are attaching a safety instruction with that memo 
or uh, something else that is uh, related to um, your reader again uh, to whom uh, we cc it and cc mean a complimentary copy so that is very important and to whom we are addressing so there are a number of format uh, like how we can uh, write the memo especially uh, one more important characteristic we will discuss the delivery time um, that how much time is required to deliver a specific memo or uh, uh, how much uh, the circulating time is crucial uh, for uh, um, for the for the information to deliver that's very important and also uh, the last characteristic is security uh, if the information is uh, uh, confidential so uh, also the company mail delivery system should be reliable if it is reliable then you can send through it uh, but if it is not reliable then you should adopt some um, any other way and uh, you can also uh, use the seal system or uh, any other mean because this is important something uh, sometimes uh, there are crucial information uh, that needs to be shared with some specific person so the security of the information is important so these type of uh, 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 characteristics or uh, the memo writing procedures uh, we will discuss uh, in this lecture uh, in writing a memo uh, we will discuss uh, about the purpose the format uh, the organization and the language of the memo uh, each of the of this trait is very important for example we have to know that uh, what is the purpose of uh, writing the memo along with that uh, uh, we should be very clear what is the uh, proper format uh, to write a specific memo uh, for example if if we are uh, writing a memo to um, our company head or uh, if we are writing uh, a memo for a suggestion or uh, any other purpose so the format can be very uh, on a small scale um, next we will discuss about the organization how to organize the memo as i said earlier uh, that uh, the memo cannot be uh, too much long uh, so you can uh, attach um, and lectures also but it is a very short information or you can say uh, short and concise information again uh, the fourth one is language uh, as we all know that the language is important and um, if we are not very well aware about uh, to whom we are writing and uh, uh, what what people uh, we are uh, communicating uh, what type of people uh, to whom we are communicating so uh, it will create an issue so always remember there are companies uh, where uh, the memos can be write in three different languages uh, for example you have to write in one language and the translator will translate into the two other languages the reason behind that because the major uh, concern is to convey the information to uh, all the persons so uh, none of the uh, employee or the member of industry um, could miss this information or misunderstand the memo so it is very important so we will discuss uh, these four um, major uh, uh, i can say uh, the major topics because it will relate uh, about 
our purpose of writing memo the format of memo and the organization of memo and the language um, in which we are communicating uh, so uh, we will start uh, with the purpose uh, of the memo writing from next slide uh, first we will discuss the reason or uh, purpose for uh, writing memos as I said earlier that uh, memos are an important means uh, by which employees communicate with each other or uh, memos hard copy correspondence written uh, within a company are important for several reasons uh, because uh, um, but there are different and a variety of uh, reasons that uh, you write the memo for example uh, you can write a memo to your supervisor co-workers subordinates and uh, multiple combination of these type of uh, audience um, important thing to remember is memo usually are copied uh, copied mean like cc compli uh, complementary copies to many readers because the reason is to disperse the uh, information among various uh, uh, section and um, uh, people working in different sections of the uh, organization same as the case uh, uh, what are the important uh, or what are the basic purposes to write the memos for example first one is uh, the documentation uh, like expenses incidents accidents problem encountered uh, projected cost uh, you can say uh, study findings uh, hirings re uh, allocations of staff or equipment so uh, anything related to that uh, lies in the category of documentation and remember uh, the the memo derived from um, because memo is the short form we used to say uh, originally it's a memorandum so always uh, the office worker or the uh, for example the assistant that is working with the boss so he will keep the record or you can keep the record yourself um, of these uh, all the memos uh, the second purpose is confirmation uh, like uh, if you want to disperse the uh, information about the meeting meeting agenda about date uh, time location or uh, decisions um, like uh, you have to convey the decision for example if uh, something uh, or uh, some uh, point or some decision uh, is made in the organization by a um, by decision making body so that information will be communicated through the memo or um, like that especially the meeting agenda is generally um, communicated uh, through the confirmation um, for the confirmation purposes so uh, in this situation also we can uh, write the memos uh, the third purpose is the procedures uh, like uh, how to set up uh, accounts uh, research on the company intranet operate new machinery uh, use new software apply for uh, job opportunities through the company intranet um, uh, create a new company website or solve a problem uh, for example I will give you a live example uh, like um, you are using LMS uh, the learning management system in the beginning uh, no one knows uh, from the student that how uh, you can uh, uh, operate this or how you can use this uh, then uh, a memo uh, is written and it is well circulated among the student so uh, after that the student uh, followed at the procedure and uh, they are start using the LMS so uh, this is how the information is dispersed among the uh, different sections like uh, one one memo is for the student section also there is 
multiple memos for the faculty section also uh, that how to use the LMS, how to upload the lectures, how to um, uh, how to record the video lectures and uh, how to take quiz, how to take assignments and um, several information and uh, like uh, how to mark the quiz, how to mark the um, midterm papers and all that information uh, will be com uh, was communicated uh, through the uh, proper memo. Uh, the fourth one is uh, recommendation, uh, a reason uh, to purchase uh, new equipment uh, like uh, um, uh, or f fire or hire the personnel um, like uh, uh, HR uh, here the human resource uh, department uh, used to uh, write the memos for this purpose like uh, for the hiring um, purpose and also for the firing purpose uh, if you want to fire an employee or if you want to uh, give him a warning letter also um uh, again uh, merge uh, merger with other companies uh, revise current practices or renew current so all uh, these uh, lie in the category of recommendation like uh, as an employer uh, if you want to uh, recommend something or uh, if you want to suggest something uh in within your organization so uh, you will uh, you can write uh, the memo uh the fifth one is uh, the feasibility um studying the uh, possibility of changes in the workplace uh, like locations uh, staffing equipment and uh, circulation of vision and missions of the organization so um, you can also write the memo uh, for uh, this purpose also again the sixth one is um, the status uh, daily weekly monthly quarterly or uh, you can say yearly statements about where you uh, where are you the department or the company is regarding many topics uh, travel practices procedures uh, i can give you example of uh, the status yet uh, that how you will write a memo that is related to status uh, for example um, when we used to uh, work in a in an, an industry and for example you are uh, working in a power company so you have to write a memo um on daily basis um to give the report uh, about the daily gas consumption and the daily units uh, consumed so it is just like the status like the daily status so uh, like uh, every day uh, your job is to uh, if you join uh, if you are joining your office at uh, 9 a.m. so uh, you have to circulate the uh, gas consumption report or the gas consumption information uh, in the form of uh, um, in the form of memo uh, towards uh, your all the concerned person like uh, your general manager your director or uh, your energy team can be a uh, a major stakeholder so uh, like a weekly uh, information also um, like uh, you can have a, a weekly status report of the equipment that uh, how the equipment is working or um, um, you can have a monthly report uh, monthly uh, also status report uh, so um, uh, again it is the form of uh, how the information is dispersed among the uh, different sections of the industry uh, the next one is the directive or uh, i can say that uh, the delegations of responsibilities so uh, usually uh, this purpose or uh, 
if the directives are generally uh, come from the uh, head of the uh, industry or uh, usually uh, the people who are uh, responsible in different section uh, for example if the uh, timing of the company uh, needs a change so uh, hr will float a directive uh, regarding the change of timing like uh, if the previous time was for example 9 am to 5 pm and they have changed it from 8:30 to 4:30 then uh, a directive uh, from the uh, hr manager or director hr whoever um, is responsible for uh, uh, circulating this information so he will circulate a memo um, so that memo will basically a directive again um, one more example uh, if you are uh, like uh, um if you are uh, adding something or uh, uh, i can say if there is a directive regarding the parking area so like um, you cannot park the your vehicle uh, for uh, for example uh, on sunday uh, this is just example um, in that in a specific uh, vicinity so uh, the directive has to be float uh, floated by Uh, the admin administration department or maybe the security department so uh, this is just to uh, convey the information uh, or directive because um, whenever a directive uh, is communicated so it is the decision of the higher authority so uh, there is no um, one a single uh, decision Uh, here so it will be a decision of the complete uh, some um, some sort of authority um, who uh, changed the timing or the parking or whatever uh, you can say so it will be in the form of directive uh, the next one is inquiry um, asking questions about um, upcoming uh, processes or procedure uh, for example if you want to inquire a specific information or if you want to know some information uh, or if you want to um, i can say uh, like if you want to demand a document or you want to demand a policy uh, regarding a specific uh, theme so you can uh, write a memo so uh, because basically you are inquiring about some information process or procedure uh the last one is uh, cover uh, prefacing and uh, internal proposal long report or other attachments um, this is very important uh, for example if you write a, a report so uh, you will write a cover memo in which it is mentioned that Uh, this report dated this topic this uh, has been submitted uh, to the concerned authority and to whom you are addressing you can write in this uh, in this way so uh, these are the some basic uh, uh, reasons or you can say uh, the uh, major purpose Uh, that uh, why uh, you can uh, why you have to uh, write a memo and uh, why it is important um in next slide uh, we will discuss about um, what are the criteria for uh, writing memos uh the next one we have is uh, criteria for uh, writing memo uh we have uh, first we write uh memo identification lines um uh, introduction discussion conclusion and uh, audience recognition and uh, appropriate memo style and tone 
so the important thing uh, that is very important is the subject line uh, because uh, the subject is very important like uh, what is the subject uh, whatever we um, uh, see in the last slide about the purpose because the purpose is your basic subject so uh, how you can write the subject uh, always remember the subject line should be very concise and uh, to the point and uh, it will not uh, it should not be uh, exceeded for i think uh, more than one or um, more than two lines it cannot it should not be exceeded so um, after that you can write uh, a memo a memo identification line in in you write in which you write date um so always remember always write date uh, in some specific format of your organization uh, like uh, some of the organization write the month uh, first uh, then date uh, day date and then the year but in some organization uh, they write the day first then month and then uh, the year so uh whatever uh, style your organization is following you can write it uh after that uh, to is very important to whom you are writing uh, the memo uh, it uh, they can be multiple uh, for example if you writing uh, a memo towards director uh, you are uh, uh, like uh, head of department or uh, you can say your director general or you can else if you have multiple you can write in two and in form uh, like uh, from you can write your uh, name or uh, with you or your uh, especially the designation is important you can write designation and after that the subject uh, the second one is uh, introduction uh, so uh, when you have once you have uh, communicated your intent um in the subject line so uh, uh next you will go uh, from for the introductory sentences so always remember write one or two uh, clear introductory sentences uh which tell your readers uh, what topic you are writing and uh, why you are writing uh, like uh, uh, i can say um uh, that um what are your intent uh, especially uh, for writing that memo because in first two or three uh, lines um the reader uh, will have uh, will get a specific idea about your memo and especially um the tone of the memo can also be um identify your uh can be identified from your uh introductory uh lines uh the next heading uh, or the next uh, section is the discussion uh after the introduction or introductory uh, lines uh, you will uh start the uh, discussion so basically the discussion sec section will allows you to develop your content specifically uh, generally uh, readers uh, might not read every line of your uh, memo so um, always use uh, uh, the trick of a skip and a skim so traditional uh, uh, blocks of uh, use traditional blocks of data like uh paragraphing or effective paragraphing is important because the longer the paragraph uh, uh the longer the paragraph the more likely your audience uh, is to avoid reading the whole paragraph uh because uh, as i said earlier uh, that uh, to um uh, to gain the attention of the of your audience is uh, very important so Uh, make your text uh, text more reader friendly uh, uh 
uh, by uh, you can say by using the white spaces bold facing or creating headings or inserting graphics because uh, if you uh, convey all the information uh, in a single paragraph or uh, in a long sentences so the reader might not uh, uh, might not might not uh, uh, for example uh, float the full in uh, full attention towards your memo so uh, using uh, these type of techniques bold facing creating headings or like graphics so it will attract the audience also and uh, you can uh, for example uh, like uh, you are writing some information uh, that is uh, uh, related to some month and the status for example uh, if you are writing that uh, in January uh, your uh, energy consumption is uh, uh, 5 megawatt and uh, in your um, in February your energy consumption is 6 megawatt in March you have this and in April you have this so you cannot uh, write this information in form of paragraph you can use table here uh, because when you use uh, the uh, table so it will easy for the uh, reader uh, to read it and also uh, he will not bother or he will not skip uh, the paragraph uh, that he feels uh, very lengthy uh, the next uh, um, criteria is conclusion uh, always remember uh, don't use hard tone um, um, conclude your memo with thanks uh, or uh, uh, any directive action uh, because uh, a pleasant conclusion uh, could motivate your readers um, like uh, um, for example um, if you write a memo and uh, you especially write a motivation uh, some sort of motivation line at the end or you reply with the thanks so uh, the reader uh, can take uh, those words in a positive way uh, so uh, these are the important um, and also um, it is the it is a proper ethical way uh, to write the conclusion again um, as I said earlier or I mentioned earlier uh, about the uh, audience recognition uh, this is very important um, uh, and this is the uh, major aspect that we miss while writing because uh, we used to write in our style so we don't want to change um, uh, so this is the uh, I can say a blunder uh, in writing um, whatever you are writing you are writing report you are writing memo letter etc so uh, if you identify your audience or you recognize your audience so uh, half of your problem will get solved um, as I can say the letters go outside of your company so your uh, audience is usually uh, a low tech or uh, or um, I can say lay readers demanding that you to define your terms specifically but in memos uh, your in-house audience is easier to address because you know them uh, so you often can use more acronyms and internal abbreviations um, uh, internal ab in, in memos that you can um, uh, use in letters uh, for example uh, if uh, I, I used to write BUKC so everyone uh, within the organization will understand that what is BUKC so if I write double E so everyone will understand what is uh, double E uh, for example um, if I write ad lab so what is the meaning of the ad lab everyone will understand because it is within the organization so everyone will know uh, that uh, all of us know this information 
so uh, we can write or we can use the internal abbreviations or acronyms in this form uh, the next one uh, we have um, the appropriate memo style and tone tone is very important because memos uh, are usually uh, only one page long or one and a half page uh, so use simple words uh, short sentences um, which conveys the specific details and uh, highlighting the techniques uh, so in addition uh, strive for an informal friendly tone uh, memos are part of your uh, interpersonal communication ability so a friendly tone um, will help um, to build uh, a rapport with colleagues um, um, for, I can say for example uh, you cannot uh, write directive correspondence uh, to supervisor mandating action uh, on their part it might seem obvious that you can write directive to subordinates but you should not use a, a dictatorial tone though the subordinates uh, are under your authority they must still be treated with respect so uh, you will determine the tone of your memo by deciding if you are writing vertically like uh, uh, vertically means um, up to management or down to subordinates or laterally uh, like to co-workers so it is very important so always use a better tone and um, uh, some sort of uh, these type of sentences like using thanks and all that uh, will help um, uh, your cause and uh, they will understand it in a better way and also it is the uh, ethical way uh, to uh, communicate the information um, that you want to um, um, communicate among the among your co-workers uh, the next one we have memo versus email uh, it is very important uh, aspect that uh, we are uh, living in the 21st century and uh, as the internet facilities grow and the digitalization grow so the email uh, importance is also increased so uh, here is a question uh, that floats in our mind uh, why write a memo uh, haven't uh, memos being replaced by email so there are different uh, aspects uh, that has been discussed here like email is uh, rapidly overtaking memos in the workplace but employees still write memos for the following reasons uh, the first reason is like not all employees work in the office or have the access to computers many employees who work in warehouses or in the field uh, cannot easily access an email account they must depend on uh, hard copy documentation like memos uh, because we know uh, like uh, the civil engineers and the people who are working on the field so if you want to communicate information uh, quickly so uh, um, uh, and if they have not access to the email so the memo uh, will be a better choice uh, the second one like not all companies have email this may be hard to believe in 21st century uh, but still a fact uh, these companies depend on hard copy documentation like memos still in Pakistan here uh, there are uh, many companies uh, who are still uh, depend on the hard copies of documentation and they uh, may not have uh, easy access to emails and uh, so somehow uh, their employers uh, their employees are not trained well uh, 
the third one we have uh, many unions demand that hard copy memos be posted on walls and break rooms in offices elsewhere uh, to uh, ensure that all the employees have access to important information uh, sometimes the unions even demand that employees initial uh, posted memos um, acknowledging that memos have been read because uh, they want to uh, circulate like uh, for the uh, labor class uh, what is the best way to uh, communicate the information uh, they posted the uh, memos uh, on a notice board or a wall so everyone can read uh, one more reason is some information can be transmitted electro uh, electronically via email uh, a bank uh, we have worked with for example send hard copy cancelled check as attachment as an attachment to memos they cannot send the actual cancel check by email so uh, that is another problem uh, generally email messages are very easy to disregard we get so many email messages many of them spam that we tend to quickly delete them uh, so this is an uh, this is an information or uh, this an, uh, is the very critical thing about the emails that uh, uh, in your account also you will receive multiple emails so there is a chance that uh, you miss the important emails if you have not managed your account uh, in the email account well so um, uh, still uh, the debate is uh, valid that uh, you, whether you can use memos or you can use uh, email so uh, what I think uh, you can uh, use memos also but in the meantime you have to train your staff or there must be some system uh, that uh, email is accessible to uh, all of us and specific emails like if you are working in uh, in an organization so a email a standard official email uh, id should be provided by the uh, industry or the organization uh, where only email regarding um, your organization can float so uh, by doing this uh, we can use that uh, technology properly but again uh, memos are still valid and they are still uh, can be used for this uh, purpose